in like two separate tries and uh, I didn't quite go over as much of it as I was hoping to. So um, so this meeting is, I think, opportunity to actually go over that because uh, so, so, you know, we are working our way through wave mechanics and as we uh, get through more difficult examples of the harmonic oscillators and uh, reflecting from step potential, that's where, uh, so what I like to say about physical intuition is intuition is when you know the answer without having to do detailed calculations and um, and mathematically complicated the situations like what you will see this week is where intuition really helps because if you, um, it's quite the kind of uh, sense of, um, understanding is different when you have to work through difficult calculus and algebra without feeling like you understood anything. Uh, then, you know, you might be able to do the algebra and calculus and won't feel like you understood anything. That's one sense of feeling. And the other is where you kind of know where the, what the answer will be uh, based on your intuition. And the purpose of calculation is to verify the answer that you already could have guessed. And um, when you're in the second scenario, the, the kind of the sense of what you feel like you understand is quite different. So I hope, that, so the purpose of all this is to help you build your intuition so that as you're going through those um, technically challenging calculations that uh, you feel like you know, you know the lay of the land better. So, um, Let's see here. Uh, let me just uh, launch this simulation that we are looking at last time, last Friday, to see if there's anything here that um, we didn't quite go over that maybe we should. Um, possible by bits and pieces that we already did everything. Um, I think last Monday I talked to, Little bit about quantum measurement. Oh, and I actually did talk about the quantum measurement again last Friday. And I think I talked about how, um, how what you see in the simulation kind of represent, um, represent uh, this spreading of a wave function represents the uncertainty in momentum, which is tied to uncertainty in velocity for a massive particle like an electron. Um, yeah. So I think there was really one thing that I wanted to demonstrate. So, uh, you know, last Monday I showed a little bit of what, um, uh, what quantum tunneling looks like. And uh, so just to quickly show the setup for quantum tunneling was uh, you have some energy or you have some barrier of some amount of energy and you have um, incident particle of some energy and with a precise, oops, uh, with a precise enough definition of energy, not how I have to make the wave wave packet broader in position in order to define its momentum precisely enough so that its energy is definitely below the uh, barrier height. The uh, quantum tunneling describes the phenomenon where there is a non-zero percent chance of the particle being found in the in what's called a classically forbidden region. So there's a little bump here. So, so, you know, when I make a quantum measurement, the likely chance is, okay, it's gonna be here. And I think in order to actually, um, so yeah, in order for me to have a reasonable, so you know, I'm gonna have to make this measurement like a thousand times before once there's a particle on this side, so. I mean, let me just try two more times in case I hit the lottery, <laughs> but uh, I'm probably not gonna do this. Um, in a live session, I'm not gonna rely on me uh, getting one measurement on the right side. Um, okay, let me just do it one more time, just in case I hit the, hit the lottery. And I might actually do this on a recorded video. Uh, on a recorded video, I can kind of count the number of trials and see how many trials it takes before I, 
oh, it's here, so you see particle being found within the barrier. That is already something. Um, so anyway, so, so I'm not gonna actually do this measurement until, until I find the particle on the right hand side. But you know, one in a thousand chance is actually not that bad, or one in a thousand or one in 10,000. Uh, compared to, to the classical prediction, we should say you would uh, never find this particle on this side. So we talked about the tunneling last Monday. Um, and tunneling is one of the wave mechanical phenomena that you wouldn't, you wouldn't expect or predict based on classical mechanics. Um, we call the region beyond this first rising part of the barrier classically forbidden region because classical mechanics would predict that you are never the particle is never found on this side. So, so that's one. Um, I wanted to show you one other uh, phenomenon that you wouldn't quite expect classically. So let me set that up. Um, I think my wave packet is okay as it is. I'm, I don't need to change anything there. Let me change the barrier this way. So I can change the barrier so that, um, so that, well, maybe, well, let me leave the barrier. Well, I guess I can do this uh, multiple different ways. Let me do the simplest possible scenario. Uh, which it would be where uh, instead of there being a barrier, there is a drop in potential. So potential goes from 0 EV to minus 0 0.5 EV. And let me just uh, leave it staying at the lower the potential. Now, if uh, someone were to ask, um, what would the classical mechanics predict? This is like imaginable, um, well, it, it's not really the best example because there are places where you can poke holes in it, but imagine a ball kind of rolling along. It has some kinetic energy and then it's suddenly going over a cliff. And uh, classically you would say, oh, the ball's gonna just keep on rolling or it's gonna keep on going, except here because of a bigger difference between the total energy of the particle and the potential, there will be greater kinetic energy. So the ball will go faster here, but from left to right, if the ball comes in from left, it'll just keep on moving to the right. Now, quantum mechanically, let's see what happens. Okay, so for the most part, it's right, the ball continues to move to the right. And if you carefully measure this wavelength and compare it to the wavelength before, you will find that, yeah, wavelength did get shorter, meaning increase the momentum. But here's the result that you might not have guessed based on classical intuition or classical prediction. Uh, there's a probability that particle will bounce back. Um, some people like to joke it as like quantum mechanics predicts that if you drive a car a, over a cliff, that there's a chance that your car will bounce right back from the cliff. Uh, of course, it, that's not to be taken seriously. If you actually work out the real probability of macroscopic effect uh, event happening like that, um, it takes many lifetimes of universe for something like that to actually happen. But um, but as an analogy, it's not wrong. As in, if we, uh, so you can imagine setting up this experiment with an actual electron, and you can set up this uh, experiment with electric fields. So in a setup like this, in most of the regions, your electric field would be zero. That's what this flat potential represents. And where you have this sharp potential drop, you would have a large electric field not in the direction that opposes the motion of the electron, but in the direction that actually helps the motion of the electron along in the same direction. And experimentally, what you would find is that there's some probability that the electron actually bounces back from that drop in potential that should actually help it move faster. And, um, you know, think trying to think of this like a particle motion, 
it makes no sense. But if you think of this like a motion of a wave, this actually makes a perfect sense. In fact, you have an um, example. You you have seen example of this, even though we didn't go through it in detail. You have seen in the optical phenomena, you've seen the refraction and reflection and light when it goes from one transparent medium to another transparent medium, and the index of refract ah, index of ref reaction changes abruptly, the light bounces from that. It has a chance of bouncing from that boundary. And that, that is what you are seeing here. In fact, a um, big chunk of this phenomena really closely resembles what you see with the light going from, um, say, vacuum, index of refraction of one, to a region where the index of refraction is greater than one. In this sense, uh, when light goes from region with a uh, small index of refraction to large index of refraction, the wavelength gets shorter. You can work through the algebraic relationship to see. And here with electrons, that is what you are seeing. It has wavelength of about one, one and a half divisions uh, before it enters the, the other side of the potential. And after it, um, enters the other side of the potential, the wavelength on the other side becomes uh, one division. So wavelength got shorter by a, a factor of like 50 per, or not quite, well, how, you know, work out the ratio, however you want, either 33% or 50%. Um, so wavelength got shorter. So the medium here represents medium where the, um, the index of refraction is larger. And, and so, you know, with the light waves, you have seen that, and we didn't bet an eye at um, light waves or photons bouncing from a place where it had a longer wavelength to where it had a shorter wavelength. And really what causes the reflection is this sudden change of potential energy. Um, so, so I, I guess the intuition that, um, that I hope you are beginning to build is the intuition, um, or is the habit of thinking of everything as, as waves. So, um, so the kind of thing I was pointing out, it only sounds paradoxical and difficult to understand when you try to continue to insist on electron as particles. Um, and the, I think one of the first things to learn in quantum mechanics is, is learn that everything has wave nature. It's a question of under what conditions you see those, you see those wave natures uh, manifestly. And in case of, you know, in case of electrons, it takes these kind of microscopic scales. Um, let me just show you one more. So something like this, it's uh, not something that would have any final effect on motion of a classical particle. But when you let this quantum mechanical particle uh, wave go through, this is what you see. And I think it's gonna look quite complicated. So um, it's, uh, <laughs> Um, um, so you have two boundaries. So you have reflections happening on two, bound, two boundaries. There's a reflection from here. There's a reflection from here. So I think within this region, um, well, both the first and the second region are just gonna look complicated because the representation of the wave in these regions are gonna be superposition of the incident wave and reflected wave, incident wave and reflected wave. And then I don't know if this simulation actually simulates multiple reflections between these two boundaries. Um, at some point it becomes not quite significant. And I think your textbook actually might even have a formula to work this through. Let me just double check if it does. Um, I know your textbook has a formula for um, quantum tunneling. And if you look at this carefully, uh, it's actually not all that different from quantum tunneling. In case of quantum tunneling, your potential looks like this. And in the scenario that I just ran, everything is the same. The only thing that changes the potential height. It goes from something positive to something negative. And depending on how your textbook drives it, 
the formula your textbook derives might actually be applicable to when the potential barrier is negative. Uh, let me just look to see. I'm curious. So, you know, this is the situation it's describing. Let me just uh, skim through the derivation that they're doing. Um, yeah. Oh, um, okay. I, I don't think you can just uh, take the formula and apply it here. Um, it, it's something that you will note uh, in some of your homework questions and in lecture. And it has to do with the fact that the form of the solution in this region, it really depends on what the difference between the potential and the energy is. Because um, when the difference between the potential and energy is negative, then the solution that fits in this region is not the oscillating sinusoidal solution, but as they will, wait, do they not drive? Yeah, as, as you'll drive in region two, it's gonna be a, a real exponential solution. So, um, so yeah, you can't just, uh, because that's an uh, actual uh, big thing that you have to make a decision on. So if you were to simply take the, this complicated formula and try to apply it here, it won't work. Uh, or I, I wouldn't expect it to work. There could be some crazy coincidence where it does end up working, but at, at a first glance, I wouldn't expect it to work because um, this scenario and this scenario are qualitatively different in what form of the solution uh, in in what form of a solution satisfies the Schrodinger equation in that region? So, uh, so yeah, but it, it's an interesting question. You can actually work out, uh, you know, if we have a potential dip instead of potential barrier, what are the transmission probabilities and reflection probabilities? And the thing that's really quantum mechanical or wave mechanical at least is that transmission probability in this case will not be zero. Uh, oh, except as um, uh, particular widths where you have resonance transmission, but let's not get into that. Um, so this simulation is a lot of fun. There's a lot of things you can do um, that I won't do now. And, and you know, you can go through this if you want. 